Okay, we're here for the continuation of the saga of the Crux Drill. We've got doctors Brian Glass and Sarah Thompson. They're going to tell us all about it. We have a drilling automation project. The drill you see next to me is the resource utilization drill. It was originally developed by Honeybee Robotics to prospect on the moon, to drill into rocks and ice and look for things near the lunar south pole if we were going to be putting an outpost there. And also for science going down to several meters uh, in addition to that. We have an example of this drill which we're testing at Devon Island at HMP this year into Breccia, which is a good uh, either lunar south pole with ice layers or Martian simulant. So we expect to take this drill, it's a rotary percussive drill that we haven't brought up here before, and uh, make holes with it. And my colleague Sarah will tell you a little bit about how and what. It's my responsibility to make the drill work from a software point of view. Drilling holes might seem like a simple thing to do. You know, you get your drill, you put a bit in it, you drill a hole. That's it, done. That's easy to say if you happen to be human. If you happen to be a robot, it's a little bit more difficult. So imagine you've got your typical household drill and you're trying to drill a hole in a wall. And you're drilling away and you hit a stud. And the drill goes Ink! and then tries to jerk itself out of your hand and hurt your wrist or whatever. Any human would automatically just let go of the power and it's all okay. I mean, at worst you might bend the drill a bit slightly, but you won't cause major problems. But a robot doesn't have those reflexes by default. You've got to teach it to do that sort of thing. And basically that's my job. As you heard from Sarah, robotic drilling is not easy. And we have to have robotic drilling if we want to make holes in other planets and search for life on Mars down below the surface. If we want to go down and explore the Z-axis, just like we've explored the X and the Y axes on the surface, we need to be able to make holes in it. We need to be able to scoop, we need to be able to make penetrations, we can use impactors, but they don't give us a very good record of what is actually there in layers, just what the constituents are. We need to be able to do this autonomously because of the light speed time delay. If we are sending a command to a drill on Mars, it's 20 minutes, and that happens to be if we're talking to the spacecraft. What are we going to do if we're not talking to the spacecraft and that drill gets stuck or jammed, just like Sarah was discussing? We have to have automation and robotics that can actually watch the drill, know when it's getting into trouble, and have it fix and safe itself so we don't lose a mission or lose the drill. So what we are hoping to do with this drill that you see moving behind me is test this because we are designing a flight-like drill with Honeybee which we are hoping to put into a 2016 discovery mission going to the same area as the Phoenix lander in Mars in that year. So it's important that we accomplish this this summer and this is the ideal location for it. Construction Resource Utilization Explorer Drill, go! Thanks so much, guys. I've had <laughs> four seasons with Brian, and how many? Two seasons with you, Sarah? These guys are great to work with. I'm always excited about the drill work. I can't even believe I can take part in this. It's Thanks great. Again. Don't Thanks, Elaine. Out. Go, construction resource utilization explorer drill, go!